go ahead and convene. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. Very well, thank you. Good. So if you'll go ahead and take down our um, information screen just for a second, and we can begin to conduct the beginning part of this business. Very good, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the June meeting of your Louisville Town Council. Always good to have you joining us, whether you're doing it on TV6, whether you're joining us on louisvillenc.net through our website. I understand Facebook we're having problems with. Um, somehow or another, the settings have changed for business users and we're a business user. And so we're having difficulty simulcasting on Facebook. So I hope you join us in the other ways that are possible. Uh, Hank, everything ready to go? Yes, sir, it is. Very good, thank you. We'll do the roll call, Mr. Smitherman. Present. Ms. Hunt. Happy Thursday. <laughs> Ms. Welch. Here. Ms. Franklin. I'm here, Mayor. Ms. Foster. Present. Dr. Sadler. Present. Very good. The mayor's here as well. Bo, will you be so kind to lead us in invocation tonight, please? Be honored. Uh, let's pray. God, our Father, we come to you giving you thanks for your many blessings, and especially tonight we give you thanks for uh, vaccinations against COVID and for the reduction in numbers of those infected and those lost to this uh, horrible disease. Uh, we continue to remember those who have suffered loss during this time. <clears throat> and we ask, uh, we, we give our thanks to you for your blessings of this town. And we thank you for its citizens. We thank you for the staff that, that operates the town on a day-to-day -day basis. And we give you thanks for this council. And we ask that uh, this meeting be conducted uh, uh, with your wisdom during the, the time uh, this evening. Uh, when it's all done, we ask your blessings upon all of those who may be driving home, uh, that they will make it home in safety. Uh, we ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Bob. Stacy or Hank, may we have that fabulous, beautiful American flag? Yes, just one second here. I'll figure out how to get to share screen. There we go. Very good. Mr. Smitherman, will you be so kind to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Thank you. Council members, I don't think we've had any changes or additions to the agenda. At least none to my knowledge, Hank. Has the agenda changed since we sent it out? No, sir. It's the same. I think it's a Miss Walker thing that, that changes the agenda just before the meeting, but uh, very good. So, council members, you've had a chance to review the agenda. Are there any changes or revisions you would like to make? Otherwise, we'll entertain a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Mr. Smither makes a motion. I'll second. Uh, Mr. Franklin makes the second. Any discussion? Mr. Smitherman. Aye. Ms. Hunt. Aye. Ms. Welch. Aye. Mr. Franklin. Aye. Ms. Foster. Aye. Dr. Sadler. Aye. Very good. The mayor's aye. That's our agenda for this evening. That's unanimous. Hank, will you present the consent agenda, please? And please, uh, Pam may want to give us some notation of why we have the financials for 10 months ending. April 30th, as, as opposed to our or ordinary connotation. Okay, um, we don't have any any um, minutes for council to consider for approval, given that our clerk has been out and we haven't had enough to have them written up for approval yet. And then Pam, we also have the resolution 2021039 for the acceptance approval of monthly financials for the 10 months ending April 30, 2021. Very good. Any questions for Hank about the consent agenda? If not, we'll entertain a motion. So moved. Mr. Franklin makes the motion. Mr. Smitherman makes a second. Any discussion? Mr. Smitherman. Aye. Mr. Franklin. Aye. Ms. Welch. Aye. Ms. Hunt. Aye. Ms. Foster. Aye. Dr. Sadler. Aye. Mayor's eye, that is unanimous. PJ, welcome. How are you? I'm doing well. Hope everybody's having a good day, a good afternoon. Always a yes, pleasure. Sir. 
I understand you have an introduction for us. I do. Um, Deputy Mills um, should be joining us. Uh, we had some change. I introduced uh, Deputy Armstrong Wax a few months back, but he has been injured and hopes to be back with us um, briefly. But Deputy Mills has agreed to take his spot temporarily. So uh, we stole him from the town next door. So always a pleasure. So, that should go unnamed. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, um, but Deputy Mills has been with the Sheriff's Office nearly five years. Um, he headed up the, um, the community outreach program over in Clemens, and he's, he's come over to Louisville. Um, he's been asking to come over here for quite a while, so we were very fortunate to be able to give him that opportunity. So he's been with us just a couple weeks. I'm glad to get him introduced today because he's actually going on vacation. So um, hopefully he'll be able to come to the first town hall meeting that we have in, in person. So. Been on the job two weeks and already had too much of Louisville. Oh, that's right, yeah, vacation. The land of milk and honey. <laughs> Sergeant, it doesn't look like he's gonna be able to join us. So maybe he'll come in later in the meeting, that'll be great. That's fine. We'll uh, if he can't if he can't get logged on tonight, um, we'll uh, I'll bring him by town hall. Most of the town staff has already met Deputy Mills. I think and, he's in the attendees. Alex Alex Alexander Mills. Hank. Yep. Here he is. Okay. okay. Here he comes. He's not going to get out of it. Yeah. Don't let him off the hook that easy. Where did he go? There he goes. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, Deputy we got Mills, you. Welcome. Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. We got awesome. you. Good evening. How are y'all doing? Very good. Sergeant Stringer just gave you a glowing introduction. Awesome. Said that Thank you've been you. wanting to come to Louisville all of your life since you were a tiny, tiny boy. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're, we're very fortunate to have him, so. Deputy, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Alex Mills. Uh, I'm originally from Rutland, Vermont. I uh, grew up there for 14 years and then moved down here. Uh, Dad got a job with Flow Automotive. I've been with the Sheriff's Office for almost mm -hmm. five years now, uh, mostly working on patrol. Uh, the last year I was over in Clemens doing uh, community outreach, um, and then I asked to be moved over to Louisville and I'm happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. Welcome and I know you'll be a great uh, one day addition to our team until you go on vacation next week, but hopefully we'll see you a little more regularly once you get back from that. I guess we can now say in Louisville, we have Mills on Wheels. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, I'm sorry. It's, if that, I would expect Mrs. Walsh to say something like that, but anyway, Deputy, <laughs> you're always welcome. Thanks and, and we look forward to seeing you on our streets. Awesome. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Very welcome, good. Welcome to Louisville. Thank you. Sergeant Stringer, you yes, have sir. our monthly report. I do. Um, this is actually the first year or we've cycled around the first month that we'll be able to compare some numbers to where we were at last year. Um, already been a year since we've uh, started doing the new stat sheet. Um, so total calls for service for this month were 625 to last year, they were at 528. If you remember last year, we were still right in the middle of this pandemic. So everything was kind of locked up. Um, we had 262 security checks, 41 traffic citations, 26 alarm calls, and we still got our response times. Uh, the numbers compared to last year, if you'll, if Hank, if you'll pull up those, uh, that spreadsheet, that Louisville stat shit spreadsheet, it right. will actually, you can see the uh, comparison. Let's see, it should be at the bottom of the attachment on the email. Okay, just a second, I didn't open that one up. Need to get okay. it. But I also do have a, a, a little, a brief little segment that um, we're gonna put in the newsletter and I'll let you know a little bit about what's coming with that, a little topic that we had started last month. So I've come up with just a, uh, just a one or two minute little uh, briefing to maybe give some public education to uh, some of our laws here in the state. Did you find the spreadsheet, 
Yes, hold. Give me one second. I'll have it done. Okay. Opened up here. That will give you a better idea of what we're looking compared to last year at this time. So, and with the pandemic, it's really going to be hard to get an accurate number because uh, so many things changed all of a sudden last year at this time. So. Okay, now I need to stop sharing that and not that. Let me close some of this stuff. While we're waiting, I did want to mention that. Uh, I hope Ms. Walker's listening or if she gets a chance to see that, see this. Uh, I wanted to say that we love you and we appreciate you and we certainly do miss you because I need you to come back to town hall because I've not had a hug in nearly three weeks. So. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can start this. It won't be the same, Sergeant, but I'd hug you. Uh, yeah. Okay. No offense, Bo, but I'll pass. <laughs> PJ, is this it? That's it. Yep. Okay. So if you look, if you look at the the total calls for service versus last year at this time in May, we were at five twenty eight, and now we're at six twenty five. And there you can see our uh, security checks, pretty close in numbers. Um, traffic rest, everything was pretty much locked down. So you can see how the uh, the traffic arrest and the citations went from like fifteen to. Uh, 41. At the time, the sheriff had kind of put the woes on everything, and uh, we had discontinued our traffic extra duty at the time uh, for a few months, trying to avoid uh, the exposure and, and the spreading of, of COVID. So I, I look forward to being able to compare these numbers for the rest of the year. Um, it should give us a better idea of how we're trending, and uh, we'll go forward. In the newsletter, we had mentioned, and I think Mr. Franklin liked the idea of, of having some, uh, just a brief conversation on some of the traffic laws. I think last year we done, or last month we done uh, revoke tag versus expire tag. So with everybody traveling, uh, going on vacation, I wanna talk about North Carolina General Statute 20-157. And this is the actual move over law here in the state. So as you know, um, when you come up to police, fire, and even utility workers now, that was changed in 2019. If they're stopped on the shoulder of the road, you're supposed to move over to the opposite lane of where they're at. Um, and that comes with a pretty hefty fine if you don't. Um, if, if you can't and the lane is um, blocked where there's so much traffic, for instance, like on I-40, the law just says you basically got to slow down as you're approaching that. Uh, it used to be just fire or police. Now they've changed the law to include wrecker trucks, utility truck, um, and all that is for public safety officials working on the side of the road. Um, in 2019, they actually changed this from a misdemeanor to if you actually hit somebody while they're on the side of the road performing their duties, that can be upgraded to a, a felony charge. And I think that case comes from the deputy being hit down on Interstate 95 a couple years back. So we're going to put that in the news in the newsletter um, that's coming out, and uh, we'll have a little article about it and the, probably the full statue. So if anybody's interested in reading that, um, it's very interesting. So just wanted to share that information with you. Good. Thank you, Sergeant. Any questions for Sergeant Stringer? I have a question, please. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, welcome, Sergeant Stringer. As always, appreciate you coming every yes, month. Very helpful, and also, of course, welcome, Deputy Mills. Thank you. Pleasure, pleasure to have you. Look forward to meeting you, uh, you. Sergeant Stringer. I think the last time that we met, you said there would be a few days before you went through checking with legal about a new ordinance we were considering. Do you have yes, an update on that, please? I think Hank's going to be able to shed some light to that as well. Um, we have been in touch with the county attorney 
And uh, I think I, I, I would feel better if, if Hank would elaborate on that and he's got all the ins and outs because they've actually been communicating. But I think for the most part, we've got it hashed out. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hank, since that's on an item on our agenda, you want to go ahead and, and talk about that now? Yeah, I, I corresponded with the attorney's office today. It's been referred to the attorney, the county attorney who is over the community police. So I'm waiting now to be contacted by him. Okay. We've gone from assistant county attorney to county attorney. Very good. Anyone else have a question for Sergeant Springer? Okay, well, I... Once, apologize, once again, I apologize because I was remiss in not introducing our staff who's with us. And what prompted my attention was to see Heather Etter, or Hannah Etter. Hannah, will you turn on your video again? There you go. When I saw your face, I said, oh my gosh, none of us have ever really introduced Hannah appropriately. Stacy, would you like to do that? I can. I was going to do it um, whenever we were under the planning Report. On the agenda for a little later. Yeah, but we well, can sure, go ahead and do that now, Mayor, then. if you'd like. Well, let's hang on to that. That means Heather has to stay with us for another two and a half hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Recognize our town manager, Hank Perkins, uh, our town attorney, Bo Half, who led us in the invocation earlier, uh, our town planner, Stacy Talbert, uh, our town finance director, Pam Orell, and our town public works director. Uh, Ryan Moser, and of course, you met Sergeant Stringer and Deputy Mills just a little while ago. Stace, will you put up our how to buzz in for our public forum, please? Very good. This is the first of a couple of opportunities tonight. If you would like to share your ideas and your thoughts with the town council, this is a great time to do it. This is our public forum section of our meeting. Uh, you can obviously do that if you are on Zoom. You can raise your hand or indicate that you would like to speak at this point. If not, you, would, you can call in. The telephone number is right there, 646-558-8656, and you'll need a passcode uh, to, to jump in. And we'll give it just a second or two here if anybody would like to take this opportunity. Hank, do we have anybody in the waiting room? Yes, but no hand. Yes, but no hands, okay? Very good. Well, folks, you can also submit written comments uh, if you wish to, and that would go to townclerk at louisvillenc.net, townclerk at louisvillenc.net. Thank you. We have no appointments this evening. We have no site plan approvals. We have no evidentiary hearings. But we do have a public hearing. Hank, you want to lead us in with our introduction into this? Yeah, the public hearing. Let's see here. Oh, long page. Public hearing is for our fiscal year 21 22 budget. And um, we, of course, we call for the public hearing this evening. Got a brief, well, brief compared to my budget message. I want to go ahead and that will be my staff presentation. This reflects um, sort of the budget message and then changes that have been affected after council deliberation. The proposed budget for the general fund is $5,312,544, an increase of 11.8% from the prior year's budget as adopted July 1st, 2020. The budget as proposed includes maintaining the current tax rate of 17.7 .7 cents per $100 evaluation. This budget is balanced with $425,954 in fund balance from the general fund. The town of Louisville also collects a levy for a municipal service district. The budget as proposed includes maintaining the current tax rate of five cents per $100 evaluation. Forsyth County has completed and released new valuation numbers as part of a four-year cycle. According to Forsyth County tax appraisers, the total tax value of the town of Louisville for the upcoming fiscal year is estimated at $1,608,414,955. This produces an estimated ad valorem tax revenue of $2,761,490. This is a 12.3% increase over the prior year in an amount uh, year amount or a $312,100 increase in ad valorem revenue. 
of town services budget for an for the economic uncertainty of our municipal revenues brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic and the increase in our service costs has been, been a challenge. However, the town of Louisville stays committed to the continuation of all of its existing services for the upcoming fiscal year, including parks and recreation, finance, administration, planning and zoning, public works, residential garbage, and recycling, stormwater management, community policing, and beautification. All services are proposed to continue at current service levels for the upcoming fiscal year. The town has four capital reserve funds. Currently, annual appropriations for these funds total $220,825 per year. At the town council planning session held on February 6th, the town council reaffirmed its desire to proactively support the development of the downtown area and the road and sidewalk improvements throughout the town, as well as the desire to de develop future capital facilities such as the new Mary Alice Warren Community Center. During fiscal year 2017-2018, the town council learned the North Carolina Department of Transportation plans to assume financial responsibility for the remaining work to be done on the Great Wagon Road to include design, right-of-way acquisition, and construction. As construction of the Great Wagon Road progresses, we anticipate that the town of Louisville will participate financially with the North Carolina Department of Transportation on enhancements such as sidewalks, trees, and street lights, as well as the design and installation of water, of water and sewer infrastructure. The budget for 2020-21 suspended the annual contribution to the capital reserve fund due to the uh, uncertainties of the economy during the pandemic. The proposed budget for 21-22 reinstates the annual contribution to the capital reserve fund of $115,000. In February, the town council voted to discontinue the design and construction of the Heritage Drive stormwater pond number one. With this decision, the town no longer needs to set, to set the money aside for the stormwater capital reserve fund or future capital projects. As such, we recommend that the stormwater capital reserve fund be closed. We propose that the residual balance of the fund of $404,682 be allocated to other capital reserves with 170,000 transferred to municipal buildings land capital reserve and the remaining $234,682 transferred to the newly created Public Works Facility Capital Reserve Fund. The 2021-22 budget, as proposed, also includes an allocation from the general fund to the newly established Public Works Facility Capital Reserve Fund for the construction of a Public Works building. This, this contribution is $95,000. The budget is proposed to spend the annual $170,000 contribution to the Municipal Buildings Land Capital Reserve Fund to help fund the debt service costs of the two, $2 million bank installment loan for the new Mary Alice Warren Community Center. The transfer to the sidewalks, bike paths, and greenways capital reserve is proposed to remain unchanged to $25,000. Thus proposed funding in this budget for all capital reserves is $235,000. For the upcoming uh, fiscal year, the town will continue design work on the gateway project along with construction work in the coming fiscal year. The town has also been awarded funding for the construction of a single lane roundabout at Robin Hood Road in Louisville, Vienna. The, the engineering work is set to commence very soon on that one. And lastly, the town plans to complete construction of the Mary Alice Warren Community Center, hopefully in September 2021. It has a current budget of $4,907,137. That concludes my staff presentation. There will be a test on those numbers. Um, Pam, I'm going to turn to you real quickly and ask you the question that I always ask you. Um, give us your statement about the town's financial well-being and our standing and if we're in good shape or if we need to be working. Um, I think the town is in excellent shape. Um, the result, the um, effects of COVID did not hit us nearly as bad as we thought it would. In fact, most of our revenues went up when we thought they would go down. Um, so I, I think the town is in, in excellent shape and our revaluation looks very good for the upcoming year on our property tax. So I feel real That's good great. about this budget. And we're carrying uh, right now in our, in our unrestricted general fund reserve, how much? It's probably about $5 million right now. Uh, and that's just, and a, then, that's just a rough guesstimate. Sure, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be rough here for a second. And then in our restricted 
reserves, which were our savings accounts. Collectively, we, had a, we have another hunk of change there too. And that number might be close to? Uh, Mayor, I would, I, I would hate to even hand, um, give a guess. Let us, just say, let us just say it's a lot of money. Yes. Um, <laughs> Hank, <laughs> Hank referenced a couple of things. One was our general fund and the other was our capital fund reserves. And for those of you that have been following town council for a while, you know that we try to save as much as we can to go toward future projects as we may anticipate them. And our reserve accounts are like our savings account. And a perfect example is our Mary Alice Warren Community Center. We've been saving for almost 10 years and a special fund for that. And when it came time to build it, we were able to, uh, to draw down that fund and go a long way in having a savings account that paid for a good portion of that construction. So that's been the philosophy of, the, of our town since we started. And uh, we seem to think it pays off pretty well because it allows us to move forward. And, and the only debt that we are carrying right now, obviously, is a small mortgage on the community center that we just initiated. And that's, that's really pretty darn good for a, uh, for a community. Council members, any questions for Hank? Any questions for Pam? Any comments? I left you speechless. Okay, very good. This is the public hearing on the budget. Uh, we will open the public hearing. This is your opportunity to share your thoughts on the Louisville town budget for the 21-22 uh, fiscal year. Uh, Hank, do we have anybody who wishes to speak? Hey, raise your hand if you're on our Zoom meeting, please. Sure to put the promo up again. Yeah, probably good idea, Yeah. There we go. And we'll leave it set up there for a second. This is a this is an important vote that we take. We, we obviously won't take it tonight because of our COVID restrictions, but uh, this is probably one of the most significant votes that your council will take all year, spending your money for the things that we hope and we perceive that uh, you find a value. Hank, anybody raising their hand? Nope. I looked one okay. more time, but I just looked and nobody was doing it. No, nope, still not. Okay. Very good. Uh, just a reminder, folks, if you have a comment on the budget, you can certainly send that to town clerk at louisvillenc.net, town clerk at louisvillenc.net, and uh, your comments will be, be recorded as part of the uh, public hearing. Very good. And Mayor, Council, you'll have any discussion comments, on our budget? So. We'll close the public hearing. I'm sorry, Bo, what'd you say? I'm going to say, and you have 24 hours to submit written comments on the budget in Thank particular. You, Absolutely. Okay, Hank, you want to drop that down, please? Okay. Council members, any discussion before we set the uh, the, the vote, the date for the vote on the on the budget? Very good. We'll entertain a motion then to set a vote for the budget on Monday, June fourteenth at six p.m. And I'll make that motion. Is there a second, please? Dr. Sadler makes the second. Any discussion? Mr. Smitherman. Aye. Ms. Franklin. Aye. Uh. Ms. Welch. Aye. Uh. Um, Ms. Hunt. Aye. Dr. Sadler. Aye. Ms. Foster. Aye. Mayor's aye, and that's unanimous. Folks, like I say, we will be back on Monday at 6 o'clock to vote on this. We're required to wait uh, 48 hours before we take a vote because of the... Uh, the inability for the public to actually attend our meetings in person. So please come back. We'll have one, a one item meeting on Monday at six o'clock and we'll approve your budget for the next year. Yes, the town council, that, that meeting on Monday has been advertised and I sent you the Zoom information this afternoon. Excellent. Uh, excuse me, Mayor. Mr. Franklin, yes, sir. Yes, you mentioned a one item meeting. I think that we will have 10 or 12 items to discuss also after that meeting or after the vote on the budget. You're absolutely correct, Mr. Franklin, because we have to, you're absolutely correct. Thank you for that reminder. Ms. Orrell has a whole basket full of things that we have to approve after we adopt the budget. Uh, so if you'd like to come in and watch us spend your money and move your money around, that will be an entertaining experience as well. Thank you, Mr. Franklin, for that reminder. All righty, moving on. Uh, Ms. Foster, you have our long awaited uh, report on boards and committees. You've been diligently working on that for about a year and a half or so, and have uh, I know have been working with staff and working with committee members. We're anxious to hear your report. I'm blushing. 
Um, so uh, with that introduction, my goodness, I, um, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mayor. It's been a, a work group of Stacy Talbert, Joyce Walker, Hank Perkins, and Jeannie Taylor. And Jeannie, all, everyone other than Joyce is um, available to chime in, tune in, and share. So um, that being said, let me just tell you, tell the council members that I've sent you actually just at the start of this meeting, the two items that you that we're going to be discussing tonight. Um, one is this PowerPoint. It's a PowerPoint on the uh, structure of the discussion. The second is the executive summary of the survey results. And so the intent for tonight is to give you a snapshot on a reminder where we've been, uh, what's what's been accomplished, what's still to be accomplished, what we need from you guys, and to queue up hopefully your approval of having further discussion about the governance piece at the July meeting and possibly the August meeting. So uh, with that having been said, I will share my screen or attempt to share my screen. Let's see here. How's that? Yes, ma'am. And can you guys hear me all right? I should check on that. I think my audio was good. Let's see David's thumbs up. So as of today, there, here's the, uh, oh, I guess that's not going to happen. Hold on. There we go. Just a quick and dirty, pro, just prior to pandemic, uh, last year, as Mayor mentioned, there was approval to take a look at our boards and committees, how they were functioning, what their experience was amongst themselves, with council, with staff, et cetera. So this is our attempt to give you a, a snapshot of where we are. So a quick reminder, there were four goals that that initiative outlined that council approved. So I'd like to have the discussion around those four pieces, if that works for the group. And again, this is in your, um, uh, your email. Uh, first and foremost was to check on board and committee members' experience. Uh, Mayor likes to talk about, are they having meaningful work? Do they feel they're making a difference? Do they feel appreciated? So we were looking at that through a couple of mechanisms. We'll get to that. We'll drill down on each one of these going forward. Second item was assess the staff's experience with working with boards and committees, because obviously they're a key, key component of board and committee success. Thirdly, um, take a look at best practices. What are other people doing out there as it relates to managing, governing boards and committees, facilitating their experience? So we, we took a look at that and are continuing to take a look at that as a big piece. And then fourthly, um, making some recommendations to council based upon what we're calling the grassroots input. So more on that. So any questions about those four? That's just a reminder of what, what you all agreed to last year. Yep, good, okay. So the first one, board and committee members experience. Again, just what you already know, um, my, my little check marks are, this is what we've completed. The arrows are what is still in progress and the item at the, the lower point called wanted are, is basically a, a, a summary of what we found out with this particular goal. The first is the survey was completed, as you know, and again, you've received this information in the survey uh, summary. The, what came out of that survey is we wanted to make sure we had follow-up with focus, well, with all of the committee members or excuse me, board and committee members what we found was they weren't all available or necessarily interested in meeting after they actually received the executive summary that you now have. So every board and committee member that serves the town voluntarily has received the summary that you've received. After receiving that, we gave them an opportunity to say, hey, would you like to sit down and review this material? Um, the ones that said, sure, I want to, they ultimately have now formed what we're calling a focus group. And that focus group is a representation, or I should say a cross-section of all of the individual um, committees. So we've had a focus group meeting to kind of get some clarity on what we heard from the survey. And it was very well received. What came out of that was uh, what I'll hit here at the bottom, but um, that's the group that we are going to be tapping and going back to, to ask for some input as we need it going forward. Um, and then finally, Jeannie, whoops, excuse me, Jeannie is working on a, um, an exit survey. You, you all have heard about this. What we were looking to do is say, if people are leaving, 
We want to know why. So we want to develop some kind of mechanism where consistently we could get some, some information to know if there was anything we needed to know about their exit that would inform us making any changes. So she's looking at getting that completed next month, really the end of, ne of next month. What, what came out of the board and committee members experience was bottom line, they just, they want to have information communicated to them about council issues, about staff issues. They want to be able to communicate. They want to be communicated to and with. Um, they need onboarding, orientation, training. They want to have resources allocated as they make requests through the budget process. And they're looking for opportunities to work together, communicating around what their work plans might be. And maybe there are ways to leverage each other as they go forward. Similar to what planning board did. You guys will remember with the tree ordinance we just did. Planning board tapped LBC, the beautification committee. And so that was a nice way, as Stacy has indicated multiple times, that those two groups were able to work together for the benefit of the town. So they want more of that. And we asked them about appreciation. They said, give us these kinds of things, we'll feel appreciated. Um, Jeannie put together a little bubble, um, um, pictorial, if you will. And you guys have heard this before. This is, I'm just gonna quickly go over this because you have this in your packet and the executive summary of the actual survey We'll speak to all of this. She pulled what we are calling the five, the five points that we learned from. Number one, um, there's a need for enhanced communication. That's probably the number one issue. Uh, number two, they want some training, onboarding, orientation. Um, number three, their needs on both the staff side as well as the board and committee side. They wanna understand their charter more clearly. And the staff wants them to understand their role in charter as well, because sometimes there is some breakdown in communication about who should be, be doing what. So a lot of dialogue needing to happen around that. And the last was just support, feeling like they're respected and supported as part of the process of grassroots representation for governing the town. So that's what we heard from the survey. And the same kind of thing happened with the the focus group. There wasn't, there wasn't a lot of new information that came out of the focus group. We used that to drill down a little bit and test some of the, the thoughts and the assumptions. So for example, we know that council was interested in, in making sure that, that there was an opportunity to appreciate um, board and committee members. And th there wasn't a big uptake on that. I mean, jump in here, Stacy, Hank, if you guys, are, and Jeannie, if you're out there and want to say something about this, but um, they really want us to focus on the communication piece and how, how they can work together as, as individual boards and committees and get out of the silos. In terms of appreciation, they did have some ideas and we'll speak to that a little bit later. Apparently, there have been some things that have been done in the past um, that we could tap into. So um, more, more on that. But the bottom line with the focus group it was very consistent with um, this survey. Hank, Stacy, anything else you got to want to add or shall I move on? I think you pretty much covered it. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. So, so some outcomes, again, keeping your orientation around sort of the five key elements that came out of all of the information that we've reviewed over the past six, eight months. Um, and I can't quite see because of the way Zoom is set up. So let me move this. Um, what communication, one of the key areas that we're looking at is how do we give boards and committees an opportunity to communicate with council and vice versa? So one of the, one of the areas we're talking about with you all further is if council will agree to have this continued discussion next time is when and how you should hear from them. Um, there is indication in charters that there are expectations for board and committees to share reports. So there could be an opportunity where board and committees could actually make presentations or they could come to council, member, council meetings or their reports can come to council meetings at perhaps the end of the year and they could sort of give a wrap up to say, hey, here's what we've done, here's what we're working on. They could make projections on some things going forward, and we could tie that nicely with the whole budget process and our own planning process in the in the winter. So that's that's one action item we're we're drilling into deeply. Um, orientation, we'll speak to that a little bit more. Um, charter informational videos. Jeannie has some ideas about that, and again, we're looking at some best practices there. 
appreciation program. And again, back to just the enhancing the communication to make sure um, the information is flowing. So that is, um, that's number one. That is the, the first goal of what did we hear from our board and committee members? So I'll, I'll pause there. May I, may I continue to let you know about what the staff had to say? I can't see anyone. All right, so staff, because key staff members are serving on the work group, they've served in essence as an informal um, uh, feedback group or focus group, if you will. So we've, we've, we've heard from them. There's an opportunity if staff and Hank decide they wanna do this to do a staff survey, asking very basic questions about their experience in working with uh, the boards and committees. But at this point in time, what we know from staff thus far is the number one issue is just enhancing the role clarity, making sure there's dialogue so that board and committees understand their scope, um, what they can do, what they can't do, how to, what the protocols are for communicating, whether it's through social media, um, with staff, um, ensuring they understand administrative issues like attendance, expectations, how to manage meetings, et cetera. So those are the wants coming out of the staff. Stacy, Hank, any other comments on staff? That was it. Okay, you're good. Okay. Third goal. So this is drilling into the best practices. And this is really kind of the, the deep end of the pool where we are right now. So we said, okay, so we find out what everyone wants and needs. We um, start to pull that together in operationalizing it, as we call it. So what existing policies do we have? What are other ideas that other places have? And how do we um, bring the best of that together? So we have sample orientation manuals and videos uh, that, that we're kind of excited about. We've seen a lot of interesting things. And if you will indulge me, we'll give you a tiny taste of what's out there so you can get a sense of what we have in mind to make sure that you're thinking that that, that could work. Um, we'll then edit the, the the content obviously to be specific to us, our town, our boards and committees. And we're, we're expecting that that video could be completed, or will be completed this fall. Um, so when you see what we have in mind, I think you might, might have a sense of um, where we're trying to go with that. And the actual manual itself, given the importance of a town clerk's involvement in this, we, we, we talked about a draft being completed by October with a full manual in place by the end of the year. And the whole intent for this, for the best practices, just creating the policies and procedures is efficiency, consistency, clarity, giving key messages, things that Joyce gets phone calls about all the time, putting it in a video or putting it on paper, um, posting it, give, making it so that it's just a lot more efficient and in doing so, the, the members of the boards and committees are saying they, they feel that that will really enhance their sense of belonging and the relationship with us as council and staff. And then finally, um, the, the last focus was making recommendations to council based upon the grassroots input, meaning taking all of this information and assimilating it and, and aligning it or sending it to council based on their thumbprint. Um, that's a really important piece of this because that's what they're telling us they want. That's what they're telling us sometimes, frankly, gets missed. So we've been waiting and we're excited and I'm assuming with, with what's gonna happen later in this meeting that there's going to be authorization and approval to have the in-person meetings if council is, is so inclined for boards and committees, finally for the first time in quite some time. So we've been waiting to use that opportunity to sit with them in those meetings and give them some feedback on this discussion with council tonight and also find out um, what else. Um, we've got some specific ideas. We've talked to Bo about, I just talked to Bo today about orientation. Bo is typically the person working with Joyce who orients our boards and committee members. Um, he is in a position to be able to get started with that in July and into August, and each one can be tailored appropriately. We're going to use that opportunity to um, listen to what he is saying, learn what we can format in our manual, and go from there. So 
that those meetings with the boards and committees are going to be really important for providing the final feedback to you guys in July. And we're going to ask them specifically about um, these, these communication needs and frankly, some of the appreciation ideas that we want to run past you here momentarily. Um, what, what they want out of this is, I've already mentioned, they, they, they want, we want, and they want um, to experience that we're listening. We're really, really listening. We really care. And we're, we're, we're hearing what they have to say and we'll take their specific requests under great consideration. So, um, hey, Marie, let me- Can I ask you a question on yeah. the last point? Yeah, please. Um, thinking about- Yes. Uh, and and some, some of you guys have been on the council for, guys and gals have been on the council for a while. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to sort through that statement that you just made that we were, quote, really listening to them mm -hmm. and taking their specific requests seriously. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to recall a time, and maybe there is a time or it's just slipping my mind, when a border, border committee has worked through a process and made a recommendation to council, and unless, unless there were just, just real issues with it, we, we implemented that. Um, and so I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to drill down and find out, is that a widespread perception that council does not listen to them? And if so, can you give us some examples of uh, when we didn't? I mean, that's, that's always the best way to ask is, um, I mean, Ken, Fred, Jane, um, as far as I can, back as I can remember, we take, we take the boards and committees seriously. Now we may not, <laughs> there's a difference between listening to them and doing what they want, to, what, what they want us to do. Uh, but there, there have been occasions when they have made recommendations that recommendations just weren't, just weren't um, feasible to do or they had implications beyond what they maybe had interpreted. Uh, that possibly could be interpreted that as we weren't listening to them, but, but certainly we were. So I'm not, Jean Marie, if there was any kind of specific examples of people would say, um, oh yes, we made a recommendation on such and such and the council blew us off. Or we, we, we um, asked the council for some guidance on something they, and they didn't provide any feedback. So that's the kind of tangible things that I can begin to understand how that, how that perception or reality is formed. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you for, oh, Jane, you wanted to say? Or, um, yes, yeah, that's something, you know, you don't want to hear because you just assume communication is going well. And uh, perhaps we need to do a better job when we don't go along with a suggestion is really communicating back why. And of course, we're always sitting here thinking the buck stops with the council. And so we got that real responsibility um, to our constituents when we make decisions. And we certainly want to respect the why when committees and boards have suggested something that we haven't agreed with. So maybe that communication from us would be a big improvement. Well, you thank you. And anybody else? Yeah, I, after many years of supporting our committees and boards, as, as best I can possibly can. Uh, I'm some, somewhat surprised by this analysis that you just presented to us. And as I understand the process, we're going to have some future discussions about this coming up. And uh, one thing about those future discussions, they will be in person instead of on Zoom. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't want to get into it tonight. Uh, uh, but uh, I think I heard that we'll have future discussions in your presentation. Yeah, that's absolutely the intent. Thank you. Um, if, if no one else has a comment, I'll, I'll address the mayor and Ms. Welch real quickly. Okay. Um, number one, mayor, that's a, that's a great point to separate those two out. So number one, I think when you all take a look at the actual survey, the instrument, and the, the you'll, you'll see some of some of the written information. We've got a lot more of that if if that's needed. That's not in the executive summary, but if anyone has in, in, a need to do some drilling down, you can start to see perhaps where some of that is coming from. Some of it is based upon individual boards and committees, um, but um, we can we can check in with them further, or the plan is to check in with them further about anything that the council is now asking. 
we want to use the July meetings to tap that and find that out and bring that back for, as Fred said, the, Mr. Franklin says the next discussion. So that's that's number one. Number two is, Ms. Welch was is exactly right. They're waiting. Many times it's as simple as making sure that the communication comes back from council with the rationale. And sometimes that occurs, but it's not necessarily consistent. So we're looking at how we make that more consistent, who's responsible for that and how that information gets relayed. Yep. Shall I continue? Please. Okay, thank you. Thanks and stop me, please. Um, sorry, I hit share of screen again. Um, moving on. So but before I hit this, let, let me, may we, let's see here. Let's do something else. Just to go super dry. Where is it? Nope, not that. Boy, I can't wait for the in-person meeting. So this gets a little boring and wonky, but it's my thing. It's our thing. So you can see that this is a, a boards and orientation booklet or manual. This is what we have in mind, guys. So imagine something where once you join um, a board or committee, boom, mayor provides some kind of a welcome message. And then we have an index. As you can see, I want you all to just get a sense of what we're talking about here. Just giving people a lot of information that we do provide them in some cases, but in some cases, we're not necessarily providing all of this. So we want to have a really comprehensive packet that we can give to these people that gives them all the tools that they need, which is again, what they're asking for. Um, so that's a, just a, a quick little snapshot. I won't go into all the detail, but basically you can see it's a lot of um, what we do, how we do it, what your roles are, et cetera. So this is ultimately when I said, we're going to have a manual, a, a policy and procedure book. It's similar to what Pam has done in the finance department. And it takes a while to do that. So the draft for that is October, have the full completion of uh, that product at the end of the year. Again, keeping in mind, Mrs. Walker, the clerk, that's all gonna be part of um, that, that person's process going forward. Stacy, could you, I, I can try, I'm gonna try something. This is a video that Stacy found and we fell in love with it. It is not a town that necessarily is like Louisville, but again, we're just looking for who's doing some interesting things. This is again from Asheville. So Stacy, I'm gonna give a try and see if I can share. Um, and if not, What can we do here? Do you have the YouTube video here, guys? Let's see. One more time. Okay. So this is a little something. Now imagine it tailored to Louisville. Of One of our no, primary no. duties in the city clerk's office is to serve and support the city's boards and commissions. If you're watching this, you are most likely a newly appointed city board member. So first, I would like to begin by saying congratulations on your new appointment, and we thank you for your service. To begin, throughout this presentation, we will use the terms board, commission, and committee interchangeably throughout. This short video will serve as an orientation to the city's boards and commissions functions and processes, but please know that the city clerk's office was consists of me as deputy city clerk and Jerry Goldberg as assistant clerk, who you will hear from shortly, as well as the city clerk, Maggie Burleson, are always available for you if you should have any questions. You can always contact us. So you get a tiny little smidge of what they have in mind, right? And they continue on with, hold on. Um, they, they lay out all of the committees and they start to explain what Bo does in his orientation, explaining what they do, what their roles are, how this all works. They reference the orientation booklet. So we tie that in together. They talk about staff and here's what's interesting. 
they talk what, what these other places that we're seeing are they have specific liaisons and we know obviously that Stacy is a liaison to the planning board but we don't necessarily have liaisons for every board and committee member or um, board and committee and there are reasons for that but I think the discussion we want to have with council is making you all aware of what we have and what we don't have and if we want to keep that that's fine but just making sure that it's clear um, about you know what, what we're doing so that's one thing role of board chair is a biggie where we just make sure that the people who have been selected to manage that are managing things appropriately so we can drill into that and then interestingly enough member duties of course um, but one thing i want to just tease you all about for our next meeting if i can find it uh here boom there are places where they actually have council liaisons. So people who either through an individual committee or maybe individual members of council serve as liaison. And we've had those as ex officios, but there are just some various mechanisms that we may want to consider going forward, just governing and communicating as we go forward as, as a council. So. This is, these are sort of the little teaser pieces that we've been playing with, not playing with, thinking, well, this is really a council decision, but we wanted to at least prime the pump here with you tonight so you can know some of the things that we're thinking about. And I can send, I'll be happy to send this material in addition, if this whets your appetite, just let me know and we can get that to you. So that's, that's that. Now, if I can finish the presentation on what, what we need from you all, um, Back to the PowerPoint. All righty. <clears throat> All right. So, what we want from council, um, as I said, using July and possibly spilling into August. I mean, we're past the budget now. We were, we're, we're hopefully going to be doing our in, in person meetings. So we're expecting to have opportunity for some sort of face-to-face -face dialogue. We wanna give you an opportunity at that meeting um, to review this material. You've got a whole month to review it, to drill down, to ask questions. If there's anything in particular that you want us to pursue and find out from the boards and committees during their meetings in July, please let me know, number one. We want to have some um, enhanced we're calling it operationalization with council communication and boards and committees. So for example, the annual reports we talked about, do we want them to come in person throughout the year and have them make presentations to the council? Um, do we wanna have joint meetings where maybe the planning board and the, and the council sit down and have some strategic discussions about some key issues? Um, there have been past meetings with uh, the board and committee chairs and vice chairs that have, have worked well. There have been um, opportunities possibly to um, have, like I said, the liaisons, or maybe we want to have a specific subcommittee of the council. We've done that for administrative. We've done it for other things. Do we want to do that for our boards and committees? Um, finally, we need you all. Joyce has been working on this before. She, she had to um, step aside for her health for a little bit. Um, finishing up and looking at the charters and scope. We want to make sure you all all understand what our current charters and scopes say for each one of them. And so you can see and compare and contrast and see if that still fits with what this council um, thinks is appropriate. And then finally, again, we'll use the time in July and in spilling possibly into August for any feedback we get from these board and committee individual meetings on some of the questions like, that the mayor just asked. You know, give us some specific examples. What, what aren't you getting feedback from us on? And then lastly, um, the appreciation possibilities and talking to the mayor and, and I, I, he, he can speak to this. One of the, one of the ideas that we had as a, a small group was um, if it would be possible to have a meet and greet tied to the Mary Alice Warren Community Center opening. Um, in, in the fall. That would be a lovely time perhaps to get this council and board committee members an opportunity to say hi, meet one another, um, chat. 
Um, one of the other things that was floated was apparently there were winter, there were appreciation dinners in the past. So uh, the thought was, well, do we want to do something like that, number one? And if so, does it make sense, you know, in late November as part of sort of a giving thanks uh, thematic? And it could make, make sense going forward when you look at a calendar approach for whenever a council is seated. Um, you have a meet and greet or a dinner to give council members and the uh, board and committee members an opportunity to meet. So some there are some of the ways to play with that. And then finally, as you all felt a smidge in April of this month, we tried to do something we found out was Vol Na National Volunteer Appreciation Week. Um, we can do that a little bit better and with a lot more notice um, next year, 2022. So there's a lot we can do there. And then finally, the board and committee work group will just keep keep on keeping on, keep knocking this stuff out in terms of the orientation and the videos and all the things that we're saying we're, we're, we're getting accomplished and trying to get accomplished. Um, finalize the charter consistency and um, keep focusing on those five things. So with that, I'll stop my screen share and ask Jeannie, Hank, Stacy, any, please, any, any other comments? I don't know how I could add anything to that. That was fairly comprehensive of what we've got going on. Questions? Yeah, let's start. Um, you know, we've talked about um, how important boards and committees are to our town. And, uh, <clears throat> but you know, we've never really, we've never really structurally put in place um, the kind of program that you all your your committee has kind of come up with and i think it's a great idea um you know obviously there they're going to be some they're going to be some modifications that, that clearly we're a small staff we don't have three people in the clerk's office right. uh, but there are there are ways we can approach this and maybe we don't maybe we don't have the full cadillac the first year but i kind of see this maybe as something that we evolve um, bite off the essentials so that we address the key issues that we started off asking about. Do you feel, do you feel appreciated? Do you feel your work is meaningful? And uh, do you feel you're making a difference? And most of all, bite into those and follow up with the kind of activities and support materials and, and modifications that will, that will address those three things. And then a lot of the other things you all have identified, I think are fabulous. There's a lot of really, really good meat here. Um, and again, I, it's, it's going to be tasked back to staff and council and um, how, we, how we move forward with this so that, um, so that it happens rather than, gosh, that was just a great presentation, but we don't have anybody to do it. So I'd like to figure out, figure out our way forward for that so that we, we don't let all this great work of this group kind of, uh, as they say, um, go unnoticed or un, uh, unrealized. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, agreed. Ms. Welch, I think you had something you were getting ready to jump in with. Uh, yes, and you, you definitely covered some of it, Mayor Horn. Uh, first, thank you so much, Jean Marie, and the staff and all the individuals who have worked, you know, on this. Very, very thorough. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it does have excellent points, especially the communication, feeling appreciated, et cetera. I think that a concern that stands out for me is the amount of time that may be involved. As we already have up to four hour meetings with a 10 minute break, how can we do this succinctly and be successful without the individual board and committee members too saying, well, you know, now we got to report to council and we already met this week one time. That's taken a lot from family time. So if, does that make sense that concerned about the amount of time but do want the resulting uh, outcome, you know, of positiveness. Yes. So what you're saying is you you like the idea of the communication is important. You want to make sure that we don't tax uh, board and committee members to have to come to a meeting, and you don't want to keep the council in a, in a lengthy fashion. What, what I'm doing is I'm taking notes to test these things out specifically with the boards and committees. So in July, um, well, when we meet next, you'll at least get some of this information from their grassroots approach that we're listening to what they wanna do. So we'll hear from them. Others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to hear their feedback on that. Okay, anybody else want to get anything else? 
Right. So um, any reaction to the ideas about the appreciation gatherings? Let me expand on that just a little bit. Um, you know, I think we've, <laughs> we're gonna have an amazing opportunity when we open the community center, um, not only for our residents, but I think this, is, will, this will provide a great time to reconnect with all of our boards and committees. And, and I would even extend that to some of our volunteers who do things for the town, but aren't necessarily on a board or committee. But thinking about having one night, almost like a, almost like a preview where that group of people um, is invited in. And we go a little more extensively with refreshments and, and maybe even some type of entertainment, but that's, that's where we can really, I think, have that engagement with that group um, in a way that elevates our appreciation for them. And then, of course, we're going to have we're going to have the the gathering of the masses when we actually have the opening. And I suspect we'll have three, four, five thousand people come through when we do that. But I thought we could do an, an event, a pre-opening event that would just be for this group, council members, staff, uh, boards of committees, and key volunteers. Jane, and spend more than, spend more than five hundred dollars doing it. Okay. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted you're, you're supportive of that. Ms. Welch and Ms. Hunt, or Councilwoman Welch and Councilwoman Hunt, you all had some energy last year about the whole appreciation piece. How does that fit with what you had in mind? Uh, well, I'll speak to what you have already reported on. It doesn't seem like our volunteers are interested in dinner and band. They like to be appreciated mainly that what they have suggested and what they've worked on has really been considered mm -hmm. by council. So I think everyone loves a dinner though. And I would say not have the emphasis on that, but certainly have appreciation. And mm -hmm. I like the ideas of volunteer appreciation week and also maybe something in November because it's been quite a while since we've done anything. Yeah, thank you, Jamery. Um, this is just phenomenal, the whole process. And as I was watching, lip reading the slides and looking at the slides, I was like, wow, this is consultant level here. So congratulations to your team and everybody that put all this together. It's fantastic. Um, my opinion on the appreciation um, is to just piggyback from what Mayor said and then Jean, um, Jane said regarding um, both that event, so or the potential pre-event, and then something else later, maybe April of next year. Yeah. Mr. Smitherman, anything you want to add as a previous member of the board? I can say that it would probably what you've done would make it very easy for someone like myself who was a newbie that came right from the outside to a committee. And, you know, really, I had no direction other than my agenda every week. But having uh, information like what you've presented tonight would make a tremendous difference on people coming in on the ground level and then in just a few weeks or months being uh, so much more efficient. So I, I'm very much in favor of what you're doing. Okay. Good. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, what we'll work on is... Um, Mr. Franklin. Oh, yes. Thank you. I think the question that was being entertained a few moments ago, excuse me, <clears throat> was about uh, the uh, appreciation uh, uh, for our volunteers and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, brief comment on that. Uh, historically, we don't do any type of activity like that around an election for the town. Hmm. Uh, that has that has been historically done. I think some of the other council members will back that up. That's been around for a while uh, in those years. Uh, normally, last year in 2020 was when we would have had a big appreciation, if you will, get together for our volunteers and so forth. Uh, that was again just something that's not necessarily set in stone, okay. but it's 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 been a it's been a traditional thing. Uh, the other thing, uh, the late November date is getting around Thanksgiving. People are making plans to be with their families and so forth. Okay. If we try to do a pre-event or anything else that's special other than having a grand opening, I'm sure that there's going to be some stuff that is not right 
if you will, with the facility itself. But until we get into it and figure it out, we're not going to know it's not right. So I would just caution us not to move too soon. And I get back to what Jane said earlier, appreciation week in April of next year sounds like a really good time to do things. And keep in mind that council normally appoints the volunteers and the board members and committee members in their March meeting each year. So it'd be a good time to welcome the new ones. Yes. Okay. And this going forward, the April date may be the perfect time to do this each and every year going forward. I'm just throwing that out there for thought. Thank you. That's and, a perfect and thank, and thank you for the work that you've done. Oh, that pleasure. Yeah, this um, that's you will see a calendar like like that's as Mike said, this is the evolving process and it's sort of a living process, but you'll see a calendar laid out to just say, hey, how would we do this in the ideal work, uh, year? So um, agreed. Ms. Hunt liked the idea, I think once upon a time, of tying the whole appointment process to um, some kind of recognition, meet and greet, et cetera. So let us, let us dig into this further. We'll, we'll send you some more material to queue you up for um, some really good discussions in, in July. So I don't know if it'll be the briefing or the regular meeting. We'll let Mayor and Hank and I sort of figure that out based on what else is on the docket. So anything else? If not, I will say. Thank you to Jeannie and Stacy and Hank and Joyce and the members. And, you know, it's, it's, these guys are fantastic. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, you, and, and, it, and it may be, there was a lot covered and, and it is very comprehensive. Um, but I heard you say something about collaboration among the boards of committees to, to eliminate any duplication of effort and that sort of thing. And then I heard you talk about the orientation, development of the orientation ma manual. Just, this is a logistics question. In what order would those things come? Uh, the, the manual and the, the other one was- The, the getting... co collaboration between, let me just say where I'm going. Um, my, in my view, you have to have all the collaboration stuff finished among the, the boards and committees so you so you really clearly delineated who does what mm -hmm. and then you can do your orientation yep. versus putting an orientation manual together that may be listing out things that people that where the responsibilities of you know different groups and and, and then the collaboration you know sort of blows that up so that that's it's just a logistics timing kind of thing that's all I'm right. but otherwise I, I I agree with everybody else it was very well done. Well, thank you. And any other ideas that you have, please send to me so that we can, I mean, this is this is very collaborative and you all have a, a lot of experience, all of you. I mean, Ryan, anybody who's who's listening and plugging in, we, we wanna take that, get the best of and and, and tweak and, and go forward. So thank you, more to come. Very good, thank you. Hank, we're on to new business. Okay. New business, we have the approval of the 2021 meeting schedule. Pam, I, this was in their material for it. The only change that we have is council's desire to move the time of the briefing and the regular meeting to seven o'clock on the first and third, I'm sorry, the first and second Thursdays of the month. And we have that ready for your approval this evening. Very good, our meeting schedule stays the same. This is an approval for the time change. That's correct. The only time change is for the council. Very good. Council members, I'll entertain make a motion, motion, please. I'll make it. Mr. Franklin makes the motion. Second. Ms. Walsh makes the second. Any discussion? <laughs> Mr. Smitherman. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Dr. Sadler. Aye. Ms. Hunt. Aye. Ms. Foster. Aye. Ms. Walsh. Aye. Mayor's Aye, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Stacy, um, comments on the UDO compliance yes. and 160D. Yes. Um, tonight, uh, the new business is resolution 2021-038. Uh, what you'll be doing is setting a public hearing to be held on Ju July 8, 2021 to receive comments on UDO L-164, which is a UDO text amendment um, in order for us to be compliant with North Carolina General Statute 160D. Um, all of that information was in your packet last week. Um, it's, a, it's a rather large 
uh, text amendment, but I do just want to hit the highlights quickly, um, mainly because for the briefing meeting um, July 1, I will be out of town. And so I wanted to, if, if, if that's okay, Mayor, just give, uh, it's all in the staff report. Those are just the highlights that I'm going to hit. Um, but if you read the staff report, it gives a lot of background. Um, it gives a highlight of um, what items are going to be changed. Um, those have been run through Bo to make sure that, that we're going to be compliant with everything. Um, and then um, on July 8th, we would move forward with the in-person um, public hearing. So we would not need to set a date. Uh, you would be able to vote on that night, on that evening, since it is in person. Um, but ju just the highlights, um, all the references to 160A, uh, that is the general statute that we um, currently reference, 160A. Um, that is all changed to Chapter 160D. So all of those references have been updated. Um, vested right regulations have been updated to be in compliance with 160D. Um, and again, all, all of this is in the staff report and all of this is in your packet. You can go through and see the highlighted portions um, and then any of the deletions that, that are in those text amendments. But um, the, the big, big thing, the main difference that is going to be in our ordinance, it's not any different of how we procedurally do things, um, except for what we're used to calling a special use district rezoning is now going to be referred to as a conditional district rezoning. Um, it's, it's the same type of rezoning where someone comes in and they ask for specific uses um, out of the permitted uses table um, in a certain zoning district. And then they have a site plan that, that um, is kind of tied to that zoning. And so it's, it's the same thing. It will go through the same processes. All those, none of those uses or anything have changed. Um, it's just the terminology that we use is now going to be referred to as conditional district uh, zoning. Split jurisdiction language um, has been added to reflect the statutory requirements. That's just in case someone comes in and a parcel is, is split inside town limits and then half of it might not be in town limits of, of what we're supposed to do in those, um, if in that situation, if, if it were to come. Um, again, going back to conditional district changes, all of those um, in the permitted uses have been updated. Um, the permitted uses table, all the S's that you see that refers to special use district are going to be changed to C's that will now refer to conditional district. Uh, family care home terminology has been updated um, in the table of permitted uses uh, the, um, definitions um, and also in any tables that refer to those. Uh, for variances, this refers to uh, the board, the zoning board of adjustment when they hear variances, the four findings. Um, that they have to find to grant variance has changed a little bit. Uh, conflict of interest standards. We already have these standards, but they are just being required to be put into ordinances, both for uh, the elected body, uh, for the planning board, zoning board of adjustment, and then also for staff. Um, standards for submission of written comments are added uh, to meet statutory requirements. Um, protest petit Protest petitions, this is something that's not specific to 160D, but it is specific to um, past legislation. <clears throat> and so that has been updated because it, it wasn't updated in our ordinance years ago when it needed to be. So we're taking that opportunity, but that, that is still comes from legislation. It's not anything that the town is doing differently. Um, <clears throat> staff changes were updated to reflect minor changes and given clarity. Um, this is when it just gives me the authority uh, in a specific situation and it, and it clarifies what those situations would be uh, that would allow me to do a staff change rather than it going like, you know, for instance, if, if density gets lower or, I mean, you know, there's, there's a very minor um, instances that I, that I would be doing a staff change. Um, amendment procedures for UDO text amendments are added to the UDO. Um, some of the, the standards for subdivisions, there are four types of subdivisions, an exempt subdivision, um, an expedited review subdivision, which is something new that's being added to 160D, minor and then major subdivisions. And so um, some definitions have been updated for those. Um, and then definitions uh, such as building, dwelling, um, 
there, there are about a handful of definitions that um, 160D required us to update in our ordinance. Um, and then some that if we didn't have those, then, then we added to our ordinance. So um, I will say that every change that is before us in this particular text amendment is all mandated by 160D. It, it is all state mandated um, for things that we have to change in our ordinance. So um, that, that's just a quick summary of, of what this 160D text amendment is. Um, and then if you don't have any questions, then, then what we would need to do is have a motion to um, adopt the resolution to set the public hearing for July the 8th. Very good. Council members, may we have a motion, please? Mr. Smitherman makes the motion. Ms. Hunt makes the second. Any further discussion? One, one Very good, Mr. Smitherman. Fred, have something? Yeah, one quick question, Mayor. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand there, Fred. I'm, I'm sorry with, with, for Stacy. Stacy, with this comprehensive update and changing and everything, does the state define what a story is? It, well, the, they already do in North Carolina State Building Code, um, but the 160D does not require us to um, define that. Now, our comprehensive plan, that is something that 160D requires of all counties and municipalities that have a unified development ordinance or, or a zoning ordinance across the state. Um, that is something that we are already in compliance with. Um, if cities and towns or counties don't have one, they're required to have one by July 1st of 2022. Uh, things that we do already have one, the only thing that really applies to us is that we um, update it on a regular basis. Um, so, and, and we're, we're, at, we're doing that and, and the town of Louisville has always done that. So we are compliant with that too. But, but as far as the story goes, um, that is in North Carolina State Building Code. Um, and it, it's not something, that's not one of the definitions that 160D updated or required. I appreciate your answer and did not mean for you to get into that much detail. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, and the planning board's working on downtown overlay guidelines that removed references to stories. Yeah. So. Very good. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I, I have a question for the discussion. Since, thank you, Mr. Howe, planning board, can you just for us and for the public, let, let everyone know where the planning board stands on this, since this is kind of happening kind of in tandem. Right, on 160D? Yeah, yeah, because they just went through what process last night and we're- Yes, setting. they had, uh, we met last night and they had their public hearing um, since it was via Zoom. Uh, they will be meeting on June the 23rd to have their vote for that, to send their recommendation to council. Um, so when you guys hear it on July 8th, the, the planning board would have already been through that, um, all of that, pub their public hearing for the text amendment to follow procedure. But there was really no discussion or anything that was raised last night that would lead you to believe that we shouldn't set this. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Anyone else? Very good. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Smitherman. Aye. Mr. Franklin. Aye. Ms. Hunt. Aye. Dr. Sadler. Aye. Ms. Foster. Aye. Ms. Welch. Oh, Jane, you're muted. <laughs> that you could read my lips. Yeah, um, we were trying. <laughs> I, had my, I had my fingers to the screen as you were doing that. In the mayor's <laughs> eye, that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Stacy. you have a item that we added to this agenda that I think uh, we probably can act on tonight. It's a, it's a minor request. Okay. Um, one, another reason why I wanted to go ahead and bring you this tonight is me being out of town um, for the briefing in July, but we have had a request. I'm going to share my screen really quickly. Um, can you guys see the subdivision in front of you? The plat? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to zoom in. You can see this lot here. This is Kelwin, uh, the extension of Kelwin Lane. If you guys remember, you um, approved this uh, in recent months. It, it's not been too too long ago. I don't I don't remember the exact date. Um, 
But <clears throat> this was approved as a major subdivision. The, the definition of major subdivision is that the right of way was extended. And since the right of way is extended, that's why it had to come before the planning board and the elected body for final approval. So it was seven lots total. And you can see the lot number seven fronts on Louisville Clemens Road. Um, because of some difficulties that they have come across with stormwater calculations, um, with timing, um, with, with getting this um, built as far as, you know, um, let me back up. Technically, they cannot um, record this final plat until this portion of the road is built. Um, so what their request is, is to withdraw this lot number seven from this major subdivision. Um, so it becomes a standalone lot. It would be a minor subdivision that just I would approve as staff. It's just, it just requires a review officer signature and um, subdivision administrator, which I, I serve in both of those capacities for the town, um, for them to be able to go and have it recorded so then they can, they can furthermore build a house on it. But um, in our ordinance, there is a section that talks about a minor subdivision within a major subdivision. And so since this would be a minor subdivision within this major subdivision that's already been approved, it requires a withdrawal of this lot and that requires an action by the um, town council in order to withdraw that lot so it's no longer considered part of the major subdivision. And so um, that is why I wanted to go ahead and bring that to you tonight, simply that there's a resolution before you that they can withdraw that lot um, it's, it's still going to be the same number of houses, but it does allow them to go ahead and record this one lot uh, without it being part of the rest of the major subdivision. And Stacy, the access to that lot was really going to be from Louisville Clemens Road and not is, from any of the roads within the subdivision itself. That is correct. Yes, that, that access is off of um, and the, the house um, address and driveway will be off of Louisville Clemens Road. David? Uh, this is just to expedite so they can build, I presume. And um, second is, will they still be governed by, or will the ordinances change since now it's a different category from what it originally was? No, uh, for this particular lot, no, nothing changes. And then for the residual six lots, um, it still has to go by everything that was approved uh, when, when you guys approved the major subdivision. Is there any is there any downside to doing this or any any potential unintended consequences from making that change? No, I don't believe so. I actually think it helps them um, to be able to do it this way more so than um, if if they were to have to do it the way that they originally planned. Um, it would require a stormwater retention pond. Um, and, and to me, that can be, number one, unsightly, but also a little bit unsafe to be like right in the middle of a bunch of homes. You have a stormwater pond. It can't, it, there's nowhere to put it off to the side or anything like that. And so um, the way our ordinance is written, um, there's an and provision and not an or provision in some of the stormwater requirements, um, which really should be an or provision. Um, but this, this would allow them, if they do it separately, the way the engineer um, does the calculations, then um, it actually helps them uh, to be able to get the seven lots and then also, um, well, expedite it like, like David was talking about, expedite this one lot. It would not expedite any of the other lots, no. Well, what I think I just heard, though, is confusing to me. Uh, the, the way it was originally planned would require a retention pond, and, and I guess that's to mitigate against stormwater issues. Uh, right. And, and, but so the, the, the area of coverage doesn't sound like it changes in any way, so right. why does the requirement go away? Because the number of lots and the density, the way that our ordinance requires us to do the calculation, um, puts more of a hindrance on a, a development of this size with, with only six lots than it does, um, you know, something that's, that's a major, like a 40 or 50 lot subdivision. No, I hear you, but the, the calculation is not frivolous, I guess. It's done in order to address 
potential deleterious uh, impacts of, of stormwater if if you don't mitigate against the stormwater. And so, right. what what it, what it, what you just said is is true. It allows them to bypass, get around a stormwater requirement. Uh, but it doesn't <laughs> eliminate the runoff, I guess. Right. I, I let guess let that, me rephrase a little bit. It, it doesn't allow them to get around that requirement. It just allows them to 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 um, adhere to the stormwater requirements differently, rather than having to build a stormwater pond. Okay. There's still regulations that they have to mitigate for that stormwater runoff. It's just it, different different avenues. They they can you know divert the drainage a different way or something like that. They just don't have to build a stormwater pond. Yeah, it's just confusing to somebody like me who's a novice at this because that seventh lot is still there. There's still impacts as a result of whatever's going to occur with that lot, and it has to link to something else. I mean, it just. It, it just doesn't make sense uh, to me, but you know, that's just me. So um, anyway, I, I just wanted to make sure there's not some unintended consequence where people can, can avoid compliance with a regulation that has a deleterious effect on, you know, our streams and all, all those things that, mm -hmm. that occur. Yeah, it is a little confusing, Dr. Sadler, um, mainly, like I said, because of that and provision in our ordinance instead of the or provision, um, requiring them to have 24% and a number of lots. And it's crazy to me, too, that if they do it a different way, the, the calculation comes out completely differently with, with the same number of impervious service and the same number of lots. It's just what's considered in that major subdivision versus what is not considered in that major subdivision. Yeah. I mean, somebody smarter than me has figured that out, I guess, so. Yeah, well, they're smarter than me too. They're, they're engineers, I'm not an engineer. Okay. So. so Any other questions for Stacy? Ms. Ms. Foster, yes ma'am. Um, one, ha have we done this before? Uh, not before. since I've been here, no, it's not, it's not been done before. I don't know prior to me if it has been done. Okay. Okay. Um, and then secondly, so, so what is the ask tonight? You're wanting us to take action on this tonight because of a timing or I think I might've missed that. You can, um, it's totally up to you. It doesn't require a public hearing or anything like that. It just requires, um, approval of the elected body for the withdrawal of the lot. Um, I won't be here on July one in order to brief you for the July eight meeting. Um, so that's why I wanted to go ahead and bring it before you tonight. So if, if you wanted to take action, that's completely up to the council. Um, or you, you could already be briefed for, um, if you didn't want to take action, it would be before you on July 8th. Okay. And we would get some material, some material, or maybe we've already gotten some material on this. Yeah. It should have been in your packet. Okay. So we can either take action or we can take this information, study it, listen to you tonight, our notes, and then take action on the regular meeting in July. Mm -hmm. okay. Stacey, uh, Mr. Franklin, go ahead. Quick question, Stacy. Uh, when the original seven lot plat was before us and we approved, did the driveway on the lot on Lustful Clemens Road access Kelwin Drive or was it always approved for Lustful Clemens Road? It was, it was always approved for Lustful Clemens Road. Okay, so what has changed? <laughs> the stormwater other, other, calculation, other, other that's, than, that's all that would be changing. Well, yeah. other than stormwater calculations, nothing has changed. That is correct. Okay, I I'm, I'm just want to make sure I understand the, the bottom line on this issue. Ryan, did you have something that you wanted to add that I'm, I'm not? Yeah, no, you, you, did, you did fine. I was going to jump in. Unfortunately, if, if the developer would have done their math in the beginning, they could have done the lots on Kelvin and then done a separate lot off of Louisville, Vianna, and there would have been, or Louisville, Clemens, there would have been, never been an issue. Um, and unfortunately, they brought it all together and it, it's become an issue. And I understand your con confusion, Ken. Um, it, it just makes it more stringent the way it's worded. 
um, they just man. found a loophole to get out of that, if that makes sense. Um, I, I think I think everything's fine. There's nothing fishy about it. It's just if they would have brought those six lots in off Kelwin separately from Louisville, Clemens, there would never have been an issue. But now they've resolved that. Does that make sense, everybody? It does, but in follow-up to, to Fred's question, then, you know, it, I, I don't know. And let, I mean, it's going to cost him more money to do it the other way. I guess at the end of the day, he said he wanted to get to the bottom line. And that's what it sounds like now to me is that they've changed what they're doing. I guess that stormwater retention pond, they sound like they're expensive to me and difficult to build and all of that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's clear, but, but I mean, I guess it's just an economic decision. Hey, sweet, 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 sweet. We have a um, major subdivision, which is more than six lots. And, and extension all, of right of way. Right of way. Yeah. And we have a minor subdivision, and we have a minor subdivision, which is six lots or less. It, it could, a number of lots I mean, it could, be, it could be more lots if the right-of-way already exists. Um, I see. But, I mean, yeah, it, there, it splits hairs a little bit with, with what category it falls in. It, this okay. fell in a major subdivision category because of the extension of the right-of-way. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Franklin? Yes, again, Stacy, uh, the the fact that I would assume that they brought us a a, uh, a plat, if you will, that may be the wrong term, that showed this stormwater retention plan originally. If that's not going to be a feature, does that impact the other lots? And are they going to be coming back and wanting to, or are we going to have to change something else for them since they made bad calculations to start with? No, sir. Um, what the, the the plat that you that I shared was was the site plan. The preliminary site plan that I shared was what was approved um, for those seven lots. Um, usually, the way the process goes is once it gets approved, then they will take it through for stormwater permitting, and it goes to the engineer. And that is when the calculations are done to to find out um, if it's high density or if it's low density. Um, and in this particular case, it, because of that and provision that I talked about, it, it threw it into high density, even though it's only um, seven lots. Um, and, and it's um, gr much greater than the 24% impervious surface coverage that's allowed usually for high density. Um, but, but because of that and provision, um, that's when, when those calculations were done and we found that provision in the ordinance, that's when we realized that uh, the way that they originally got the approval of the subdivision, that they would have to do the stormwater retention pond um, with how it got approved originally. That's why if they withdraw this lot, um, then it takes it, it's then considered low density, so they do not have to build that pond, and they can go ahead and build the house on lot seven. They, they essentially are going would have lost. The ability to build something. With yeah, they, they would have lost probably two or three lots if they would have had to build the stormwater pond. Stacy, you say the planning board has discussed this. They're going to be holding their public hearing. They'll make a recommendation after the public hearing. No, sir. This does not require a, the public hearing okay. nor to go to planning board. Uh, the ordinance only okay. requires the elected body to make the decision on the withdrawal. And so we're relying on a staff recommendation with your knowledge and background and understanding all of this. Yes. And your recommendation is what? To allow them to withdraw the lot. Okay. Council members, any other questions? What's your pleasure? You wanna bump it a week or yeah, bump it, no, bump it a month or go ahead and, and act on it now? Well, since there's no urgency, I think I would like to have an opportunity to further review the uh, information we've received. Council members? I'm in agreement with that. Okay. okay. Very good. 
So let us then, uh, Hank, let's carry this over to our, uh, let's see, we've already kind of had a briefing on it. We'll have an, uh, a mini briefing by Bo, since Stacy won't be there in July. And then we will have a, uh, a vote on it on our July regular council meeting. All right. For July consideration. Regular. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Hank, we're at administrative reports, please. Okay, let's see here. For Vince and Shadowford Square, I don't have a list before us, but we do have um, the startup. I think I've given a uh, comprehensive list in the past and sent out a list of details. Also, the, there is a, a lot of details on the town's Facebook page concerning the uh, upcoming events at Shadowford Square and events uh, as events have been created for that to people for people to follow. We do have a concert that's going to be day after tomorrow. It's on the border. That's the ultimate uh, Eagles tribute band. That is going to be, I believe it's seven o'clock. Is that correct, Pam? That's correct. And it's only going to be a, a two hour event. So we will not last long for, from seven until nine. So don't miss that one. And then next week we're going to have a movie. Moving on to the gateway project. Um, do have an update on that. As I reported previously, we had a bid opening that was going to happen this past Monday. And unfortunately, we had zero bids for the project. We went back in and asked the folks that, that participated in the, the pre-bid process. We had about four contractors that were participants at that point. And basically it came down to the state of economy for them. They have more work than they can typically handle or that, that they can handle right now whether it's between um, uh, other state DOT or municipal projects, or quite frankly, subdivision projects. So right now, contractors are not at a loss for business. They do not have the time or capacity to take on additional work. So we are going to wait uh, probably three weeks now, I guess, and see if we can get past the July 4th and then do a re-advertisement. On re-advertisement, if we can get one bid on re-advertisement, we can move with one bid. Um, if we had gotten two bids on the first time, we would still have had to re-bid because we didn't get three have three. So we're gonna go and take an attempt to see what we get on a re-bid. We do not, under any circumstances, have to take a bid. If we feel like the bid that we receive, if we do get a bid on rebid, is too high or someone is taking advantage of the situation on a low bid um, scenario, the town can pass on that. We are under no circumstances to take any bid received. We can we can do that. If that does happen, the recommendation for the DO, from the DOT is that we give it about two months and get into the fall, go through the process again and see what happens. Right now, it just seems that um, there's a lot of work out there and not a lot of time for contractors to do it. Anyone have any questions regarding what I've just went through? Okay, moving on. Um, last week, we did give some conversation to the town getting in person beginning in March. To review a little bit, we talked about putting a, uh, some, some signage on the door, talking about not being, mass not being re required, but um, recommended. We're going to space out the seats to have an appropriate number of seats within council chambers that would, I guess, uh, accommodate our normal representation from the public at that time, but still give some sort of um, separation for those in attendance. And then at that point, we're just going to go through our regular business with the town council. Um, anyone have any final questions? And I'm going to move on to boards and committees after this. Uh, hey, yes, I, I think you mentioned March, but didn't you mean July? Uh, yes, ma'am. I did. If I said March, I was incorrect. We're, we're talking about July for that. All right. For boards and committees, we, we've got some, um, if everybody understands, we or remembers, we did do some work on town hall for access controls. We do, I think, uh, Ryan, that's going to be mid-month here on the 17th. That's correct. Paige is going to come back in and see if we can iron out the remaining bugs on that one. That will give us the ability to get the assignments for the individual <laughs> boards and committee codes for the, for the building itself. If we can get all that worked out and the council approval, we're going to work on a council and board restart 
for in-person attendance starting in July. Um, and that's our plan unless council sees like it feels like it wants to do differently. Any uh, response to that? I, I, think, I think we set a date of July 1st. Just make it clear. I mean, if we can, we'll, we, that's the plan is to get them back in here um, in July. Very good. Okay. Any objections, council members? Be good right. to see everybody. And then as an update on our town clerk, uh, we're looking forward to seeing her back on Monday morning at eight o'clock. Talk to her today. She is very ecstatic and is looking forward to coming back and joining staff. And that's all I'll have. We understand that she's been getting special uh, massage treatments from um, Mr. Clint Walker, uh, <laughs> noted, noted collard green cooker and now uh, masseuse. And that has worked out really well. So she's going to be back with us. That'll be great. Joyce, we'll, we'll really look forward to seeing you Mr. again. Mr. Walker is being working very hard to make sure that she can leave the house on Monday and come to work. <laughs> Can't wait till she listens awesome. to this. You have something. Right, right. <laughs> I do have something, Mayor Bo. Um, just for the record, David Smitherman texted me and said he lost power um, at oh. about seven fifty. Um, so he's in he's trying hall. to get yeah some connection and uh, get back in. So okay, I'll look for him. A question. Yes. Yes, Miss Foster. Thank you. We're, real quickly, so. Um, Remind me, Hank, where we are so with, with Zoom. And I think, Bo, we're still in a state of emergency. We can have in-person meetings. We will be on Channel 6 and Zoom. How will Zoom exist? As, or not? We, well, as we said last week, we're going to take a wait and see on Zoom, okay. concentrate on getting back and operating just as we did in the past. And then we will uh, see where we shake out and how to incorporate them in the future. Okay. That's Thanks. right. Thanks for the reminder. And David is ready to go, come back in. Okay. Very good. Anything else for Hank on that? No, Hank, I heard, I thought in the um, COVID update this afternoon that there's going to be a, a new executive order tomorrow. Have you heard that? I have not heard that. Did they give you any hints as to the nature no. of that? No, he wouldn't say what it was going to be. Okay. He said that it was going to be updated tomorrow. Okay. So pending no change by the state, that's our plan for July. That is correct. That's where we're headed. Very good. Ms. Hunt, did you have something? Bob, saw your hand went. Sorry. Well, we're now at that long awaited time in this council meeting to uh, have the introduction for Hannah Etter. And Hannah's been waiting patiently. Uh, she's in the green room, it looks like. Um, so we'll uh, <laughs> turn to you, Stacey, for the introduction. Yes, so as all you can see, Hannah is here with us tonight. Um, I'm very pleased to introduce her. Um, I did let you know she is a UNC Chapel Hill student. Um, she is an undergrad, but she is also currently working on her uh, master's degree in planning at UNC Chapel Hill. And um, she has been a blessing to be here. Um, I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of an update of some things so far that she has been working on uh, for the planning department. Um, so first and foremost, she was able to get um, all of my files in order. Uh, when I got to the town of Louisville, um, the, fire, the files were a little bit um, besheveled. So she was able to organize those and refile those and to make sure all of those files were, or, or hard, hard copy files are up to date and everything. Um, everything is accounted for and all that good stuff. Um, she was also able to go through our UDO and create some checklists for uh, the planning department in order for us to review site plans and that sort of thing. So she's been working on that. Um, she's been a big part in the most recent UDO text amendments that we have done and the ones that we've been working on with the planning board with the downtown overlay uh, with 160D um, and, and all those good things. She has been doing a lot of research for me um, to help me, even if it's just finding other references in the UDO so we don't miss anything. Um, it's, it's really nice to have a second set of eyes on those types of things. Um, so she's been helping a lot with, with UDO text amendments. 
Um, one thing that even the planning board was very, very pleased with was Hannah um, is an also an art major. So she was able to create some visuals um, for our UDO text amendment for the downtown overlay that we're working on, um, which is which is really helpful when you're trying to clarify some of these things that that we as a town are trying to clarify. So um, she was able to create those so we can add those into our UDO text amendment. So once they get to planning board, um, you'll be able to take a look at those. And also helping me edit those text amendments after the fact um, to get them in working order um, for the UDO so we can send those off to get those uh, incorporated into uni code and, and everything online and get all that updated. And then most recently she's been working on brochures for the planning department um, so we can have um, some engagement and, and um, education opportunities. If somebody comes in and they have questions about re a rezoning, what's the process, or a conditional district zoning, special use permit, those types of things. So, so she's been working on some brochures for that stuff as well. So um, she's she's been a ray of sunshine for us to, to have her here, and we're excited to see where the summer goes. So there's Hannah. <laughs> we're happy Hannah? to have her. Very nice to have you here. Are you, are you getting along with Stacy so far? Yes. <laughs> do, you have, do you have your own workspace up there? You know, there were, she had tables covered with maps and things. Did they and she, clear she you out clean, She fixed all that. She helped me out with, those were all files that, that um, before COVID I wasn't able to get to. So, but yeah, she does have her own office. It's, it's right next door to me. So. That's great. Mm -hmm. Anna, how long are you going to be with us? Um, just for the summer, probably till like the first week of August or something. Okay. Yeah, and she'll have to go back very to school. Good. So. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for all you're doing here. Uh, a great addition to the staff, even if it's only temporary, we appreciate your work. And when Stacy says you're doing a good job, you probably are doing a good job. She She's a tough cookie. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Anything else, uh, council members, for Hannah? Okay, Hannah, you go to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Hank, you want to bring us up to date, please, on our uh, actions we took at our briefing meeting. Yes, okay, we had four things that we took on and approved. First was resolution 2021040, acceptance of federal funds under the Americans Rescue Plan, American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. The next, we uh, approval of ordinance 2021028. This was the establishment and maintenance of the American Rescue Plan Special Re Revenue Fund. Next was approval of ordinance 2021031, amending budget ordinance 2020001 in an amount of $10,000 to increase the budget for legal fees in the governing body department. And lastly, we have the, the approval of ordinance 2021033, amending budget ordinance 2020001 and an amount of $10,000 to increase the budget for Powellville right-of-way maintenance. Very good, ladies and gentlemen. We find a necessary on occasion to take some actions at our planning meeting, which is the our briefing meeting, which is the first Thursday of every month. Uh, when we do take actions, we report them out at our regular town council meeting. So uh, if you were not able to attend us the briefing, you know what actions we took at that particular time in your behalf. Um, we are at an opportunity for you to speak again or address the council. Stace, would you put up the, uh, the how-to sheet? Very good. Um, hopefully we have some folks who have joined us in Zoom who all you need to do is raise your hand. Uh, if you don't have Zoom and you wanna call us in, uh, call in, it's 869-1622-9267, 869-1622-9267. That's our webinar ID when you call in on the number below. Okay, you'll need that, you'll need that number for the webinar. Hank, do we have anybody who is raising their hand? No, sir, we don't. Do we have anybody left? Yes, we've got five people. Well, Excellent. that includes TV, so we have four people. We have four people, okay. Well, very good, folks. Uh, again, if you have comments, you can send them in uh, via email to townclerk at lewisvillenc.net, townclerk at lewisvillenc.net. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we appreciate you all taking time out of your evening to attend your town council meeting. It's important for us to have you here uh, and we appreciate, um, we appreciate your, your attendance. Council members, up to you. Any comments this evening? Ms. Welch. 
Uh, yes, I was listening to Governor C Cooper today about the COVID update. And as the state is trying to get more people to be vaccinated, they are now offering a lottery of a million dollars. And I believe it's every two weeks. So if you have not been vaccinated yet and you are vaccinated, you will have two votes for the lottery. If you have been vaccinated, your name is also included in the lottery, but only one time. So and it's that's automatically new and that's included, right? Automatically it's, it's included. Fabulous. And they're going to pay for it by the federal money for COVID that will be given to the state. Okay. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have to, we shouldn't have to tease people to get into it because it's important for all of our health, not only ourselves, but those who, who we come in contact with. So mm -hmm. Ms. Welch, thank you for that reminder. If you haven't, if you haven't gotten your vaccinations, please do. And you could win a million dollars. Wow. Mm -hmm. Anything else, council members? If not, thank you for all you do, staff. Thank you for preparation, presentation, and tonight's meeting. Um, Pam, again, Hank, thanks for your preparation on the budget. Uh, we must be doing something right. We had a, a, a number of opportunities for folks to address the council on their concerns with the budget or approval of the budget, and we must be doing okay. With that, council members will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. Franklin makes the motion. Dr. Sadler makes the second. Any additional discussion? Mr. Franklin. Aye. Ms. Foster. Aye. Ms. Hunt. Aye. Dr. Sadler. Jan, I think you're Aye. <laughs> Ms. Welch. Aye. Mr. Smitherman. Aye. Very good. That's mayor's eye. That is unanimous. Again, folks, thanks for being with us. Folks, have a great rest of your week and uh, um, stay safe. We're adjourned. Good night.